Um, but what's wrong with the Nets? I hate to be so reductive. Mm. James Harden. I, he's supposed to be the fifth best player in the NBA or whatever. And it's three games in, and I'm not sounding any alarms. There's no alarms being sounded. But he is not playing up to the level that he did when he got to the Nets last season when he was out of shape. And part of his issue is right now, and part of my concern, is that he's like, when he played, came over, he was playing point guard, but I think he was really more, he had much more of a control of the game. Like there'd be times when like, he was like, I'm not going to score right now. I'm just going to distribute. And then I'm going to amp it up and try to score now. And I think it's because of the rule change. He doesn't get to the free throw line. <laughs> he got to the free throw line once in, in the Hornets game. He was one for one from the free throw line. That is like such an oddity in, mm. in the most recent career of James Harden. <clears throat> And I'm like, now we could talk a lot about the rule, but if James Harden's not getting the foul calls that he always did, which I don't think he will, <laughs> it does diminish who James Harden is. Like, I almost think that's a bigger deal than Kyrie not being with the team, at least right now. Like, I, I let me look at James Harden's, like, per-game stats, but I'm pretty sure none of the games so far this year, he's really had, like, a, a great free throw He's only taken three free throw attempts per game this year. Yeah, I mean, I think my... Last year, it was like 10. <laughs> my, that's a dramatic difference. My feeling on it is that, like, I don't know that it's the rule difference that's ultimately, like, what's what's happened here. Because I haven't seen him, like... I, I mean, we talked about it a little bit last year that he, like... He, he had kind of stopped doing the, the cheesy... The cheese moves uh, quite a bit last year. Um, I just don't see him like his usage just doesn't feel right. Like I don't feel like he like his impact offensively like I used to. And I think that the downstream, the trickle down economics of that, Mike, or that Reagan, you don't yeah. they don't the Reaganomics are you don't go to the free throw line that much. So I I mean I would I'm interested in the idea that it's like a <clears throat> due to the rule change, but I would say like overall I haven't seen him do the the hardened things. So um and well, he's, but he, what yeah. I think it is I'm not even saying – yeah, so I agree with you. Like, his play on the court, he's not doing, like – so Trey Young really took the mantle from James Harden. Harden – but Harden, like, was still manipulating defenders and getting fouls in an, uh, in a, an obscene way. But because of what he was in his past, refs are just are not, are not giving him anything because, he like, the spotlight's on him. If you're going to make this rule change, even if he's not acting – poorly in terms of like sh throwing his body into defenders and taking off a shot refs to make a point via the NBA. The NBA is telling refs, let's not give Harden. Like don't, don't give him a bunch of fouls. Like if you don't see a foul directly, don't give him a foul. Like mm -hmm. don't allow him to go to the free throw line <laughs> 10 times a game by just guessing. Cause what would happen like for years was like basically like refs were guessing that he was getting fouled. Yeah. And he was kind of getting fouled, but like really, he was just manipulating. He was performing. Now they're like not even. They're just like we're not going to give you anything, even if he's not performing anymore. Uh, it's like sort of like how the Boogie Cousins thing, over like Boogie would get extra technicals more than anyone else because he was so famous for just blowing up at refs yeah. that he could do something smaller and get a tech from other guys. They're not. I mean, they're not calling fouls. He's he's averaging three free throws a game. Last year, average 10. That's a dramatic difference. So offensively, that's a dramatic difference we, from what it was Can we look before. at his shot totals just quickly on the season? Because I just sure. want to see if he's, like, even shooting the ball anywhere near how, how much how often he used to. Dive into the game logs? Yeah, let's get the game logs going. Um, Probably not great radio. Six, but. I mean, he's took – yeah, he's taken 16 shots, 17 shots, and 16 shots. Okay. He's, he's, he's actually, from three, been, like, fairly okay. He shot four from eight from the first in the first game three for seven in the second game and two from eight against the hornets which obviously isn't that good but like overall he's been fine what's been happening to me i mean he still gets these numbers right he still scores about 20 points a game he gets eight assists about eight rebounds he isn't controlling the game though like he did last year and i do think that goes back to fouls like he controls the game in a really unique way because defenders are become so terrified to actually guard him because he was so good at baiting them into fouls. And the more fouls they rack up, 
the less aggressive that they can be throughout the game, and he can continue to take advantage of them. And also, it, it really unlocks his step-back game if they're so scared to guard him up close. Like, if they're so scared to be up close to him defensively that they're always going to get he, – that he's going to draw fouls off of them, they would give him extra space, and then he could do step-back threes. Now, he's shooting ball well from three, but – I, there, my all this links back to one thing beyond the fouls, which is like this team doesn't feel like it's in control on offense. No, in a firm way, it's like <clears throat> Kevin Durant is ascendant, MVP level, amazing play. He's been incredible, but beyond him, Harden has been iffy for Harden for James Harden, and no one else from the from a role player standpoint has been consistent. Like Joe has had a good game, but he's also had bad games. LaMarcus Aldridge wasn't really heard from the first game. Had a great second game. It was fine the third. Like, right now, there isn't the consistent third guy to go along with the top two. And if Harden's not playing at his peak, it's just, you talk about Reaganomics. It's this cascading effect of, like, it kind of rolls down Mm. off of Kevin Durant. I I just don't really know, like, what our offense even is at the moment. Like, there's no, there's not really been a time where I've been like, oh, that's like everything. Like, obviously, we've talked about the the Claxton Harden attempt at, like, making that, like, a big driving force, an engine of our offense. And that does not seem to be, that is a janky engine. That is not something you want to, you want to count on uh, day in, day out. And then the other solution is, like, okay, just give it to, like, just give the ball to KD and let him ISO and cook. And it's like, okay, well, that's one, you know, way of using KD. It's like, you know, obviously he's as as good as there is out there uh, at that. So it's like somewhat effective. But can we think of something a little bit? Can, can we think of – can we get something else going? Um, yeah, I just feel like anytime that there's like an open um, Joe Harris three, it's like, oh, that's sort of surprising. Like that's it doesn't happen that often. Not, as, not nearly as often as it seemed to last year. Um, so I don't know where like the, you know, there's sort of like low hanging fruit, but like the ball movement stuff, Mike, it's, it's not, uh, there's, there's some rust there. It appears it's, and that kind of goes back to, and we talk, it's the standing around. It's like Harden running pick and roll with Nick Claxton, which is like not that good. Joe Harris isn't doing the JJ Redick thing that we want, right? Mm, like no. that really hasn't been like Joe isn't JJ Redick. Like, he, Joe hasn't really been like a, I'm going to run around a million screens and get open type dude. No. But also, he's very much waiting for the ball to get to him from a three-point perspective. And he's not driving as much as he used to. I mean, this is three games. So, like, you know, when you hear, as I'm saying these things, I feel like, you know, like, I don't want this to be written in stone. If anything, written in sand. These, these the are quick, these are quick fixes. I mean, Patty Mills could be that guy. I mean, like, this is, we sort yeah. of talked about this last episode that, like, although I don't want Landry Shamit specifically back, like, ha- that type of player is something that we could probably use more of, of just like a, a, a fast wing who is more wanting to find a spot on the floor to shoot from. Um, yeah. Or like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, Jordan Poole, that's the, that's the comparison that, that's the, that's the one you Jordan want. Poole. Um, so in in lieu of that, we don't we don't really have necessarily that, but like we have like the shorter guardy version of it in Javon Carter and Patty Mills. Uh, Patty probably more reliable than Javon. How are you feeling about Javon? By the way, got the start, got the start yesterday. I, I so Kevin Durant said something after the Sixers game, a win, the only win of the season, where he was like Javon's pressure on ball pressure was important for us, and so I'm holding that as like my nugget for why. I'm I'm holding on to Javon Carter as like a role player here. And again, three games. But I I also think like Bruce Brown's a better player overall. Like I think Bruce Brown has more impact in sort of these other areas. But Javon Carter's like distinctly like he does ball pressure and this team has sucked on defense for, you know, they're just not that good on defense. And if he can help that, that's fantastic. Nash is really figuring like he's really got it. He's really trying to figure out the mix and what works and what system works. This system is not the same thing as what it was last year. Like, I, I think distinctly watching them play, as you said, it's much more like Katie ISO heavy or pick and roll with Harden. But nothing off ball that's interesting. And, There's and, nothing interesting happening off ball. And nothing that compatible between those two guys. Like, it's either like James Harden's yeah. possession or KD's possession, which you'd, you'd, you'd like to see it fixed a little bit, I think. 